Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, Health Junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Autumn McLeese. She's a coach, a doula, a mentor, and host of the Know Better, Do Better podcast. Autumn is all about empowering folks to explore alternative healthcare options. And really through her own experience of overcoming vaginal lichen sclerosis, and now she's working on hepatitis C, Autumn's really learning what it takes to empower your own body to heal itself. So we go into some really fascinating topics and different kinds of treatments that maybe you haven't even heard of before. So if you're struggling with an autoimmune condition like Autumn, and you're just feeling hopeless, this podcast is for you. Because we're going to talk about all kinds of different options that you might not be thinking about, including using your own mind to help you to heal yourself. While it sounds a little woo, trust me, I've seen some good stuff. So is Autumn. She's proof of it. I have plenty of patients who are as well. So let's introduce you to Autumn McLeese and the concept that you have it in you to take care of yourself and your health conditions. All right, let's get on with the podcast. Autumn McLeese, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. I am so honored to be here with your incredible listeners. Thank you for the honor. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, we were talking before we hit record, and one of the biggest things that I really want to send a message about, and and you are on point with this, is that we have the power to heal ourselves. We don't have to give our power to someone else, and we are definitely going to dive into that today. So high five on taking the the power back and putting it back in your hands. Yeah, that's truly what my story and journey encompasses um, from a scenario years ago to a current one right now that I am overcoming. Well, we're definitely going to talk about that today. So let's let's start with, you know, a lot of people, I, I've had so many more patients diagnosed with autoimmune conditions as it is on the rise and, you know, there can be lots of other argued statements as to why it may also be on the rise, but nevertheless, mm-hmm. lichen sclerosis, mm-hmm. vaginally. Holy yeah. cow, you healed yourself of this. This is a big deal. And I think for a lot of people, um, they might be like, lichen, what is this? So let's give them the scoop. Let's let's talk about how it becomes an autoimmune condition or how it is an autoimmune condition and what kind of impacts it has on you. Yeah. So as I understand it, it's an autoimmune condition and you can probably enlighten more on this, but the basics of it is that it attacks the skin and for women, it can attack in different places. Um, for me, it was a vaginal condition and I, we actually thought it was like, um, like a yeast infection at first, you know, it had kind of some of those symptoms until I went into the gynecologist and he's like, Oh, we gotta, we gotta do a punch biopsy. I'm suspicious of lichen sclerosis. So sure enough, came back and that's what he said. And, and it, I guess, wasn't too much of a surprise because my mom actually had it years prior. And so when I found myself with it, obviously at this time in my life, I knew nothing about health. I was just like the average American living off of, you know, fast food and buying regular groceries at the grocery store and just not aware that my diet played such a role in my body and my health condition. And that's part of my story is literally by changing my diet, um, I was able to reverse this. Um, so you let me know if you want me to, to just roll right into it, or if you have any other questions before me. No, roll into it, roll into it. This is good stuff. Yeah. So, well, let me take it back here for a minute, just so we have a little bit more context of, you know, who I was. So, like I said, just average American, you know, living, living life and uh, my awakening actually, cause this precedes the whole lichen sclerosis thing. Cause I wouldn't have known what I knew at the time. So this is like my pivotal moment. 
is it was before I had any kids and I was, must've been just at home kind of doing laundry and I had the TV on and this infomercial comes on and I don't normally watch infomercials, but I kind of found myself there gazing and listening to what he was saying. And he was talking about a book called natural cures. They don't want you to know about. And it got my attention and I ended up buying the book, which I don't think I've ever bought anything from an infomercial. (laughs) So I get at home and I read through that thing so fast and I'm not even a reader either. And I found myself really just, um, taken and, and convicted by this truth that really made sense to me that, cause it doesn't make sense. Are, were we really meant to feel this way? Were we really meant to walk around and live in such a sick culture? Is there really no answers or solutions to what everybody's struggling with? I mean, is this it? Mm-hmm. And so what he was sharing was all this awareness that woke me up to ingredients that's in our foods. And basically I came to the realization of my gosh, I'm a sheep to the slaughterhouse. Like if I don't wake up to what they're putting in our food and be aware and, and be a good steward of this body that God gave me, then, uh, I've got to just accept what the consequences are. So I either take charge or essentially I kind of allow myself to become a victim of whatever they're doing because they don't have plans to keep us healthy. The food industry doesn't, they're just there to make money. So I woke up and the first thing I did in in reading some of this is I learned about MSG and how it's a neurotoxin and it over over excites our cells to the point of death. And so it's hidden under like 30 different names. Mm -hmm. I went in the kitchen. I went through some of my boxed foods and sure enough, I found many boxes that had MSG hidden, you know, two to five times that I was eating and I had no idea. So then I found myself uh, going to our local Trader Joe's, which is so funny because I'd never been there. <laughs> and I just thought, I didn't even know what it was. I just, you know, went to a regular grocery store. And when I went into Trader Joe's for the first time, I remember going over to the deli section and I picked up some of their meat and I was learning to kind of read labels and look for things uh, that I had learned in this book, you know, to be aware of. And the meat said no nitrates. And I'm like, what's nitrates? Like (laughs) what in the world? Like I, at that time, you know, 14 years ago or whatever it was, there wasn't as much packaging that stated like in, in the regular grocery store, you know, no GMOs, no this, no that. So the fact that it was saying boldly, no nitrates, I was like, wow, well, what's this? So anyway, lo and behold, that was the pivotal moment of my awakening of me really waking up to, okay, like we have a problem here and we all need to be aware of it. And some people are aware of it, but they don't maybe believe it enough or they don't realize how much food controls us. So now we, now I find myself with this diagnosis years later. I was slowly but surely trying to do better, buying organic, making healthier choices, very much a process. And when I got this diagnosis, my doctor said, well, we don't know why you have it. We, there's nothing you can do other than take a medication. And the medication side effects is that uh, it was going to essentially worsen my condition. So for me, having lichen sclerosis vaginally, that looked like little fissure tears during um, intercourse with my husband who I'd been married to for like seven years at the time. So that was like a whole new, like what in the world's going on? And I eventually wanted to have um, another baby. So at the time of diagnosis, I had had a C-section prior and I wanted to go on to have a vaginal birth. Well, I knew that there was not going to be any chance of a vaginal birth if I couldn't even tolerate, you know, just daily stuff with your husband. Right. So the doctor gave me no hope, no hope, no answers. Um, just left me frustrated, really said nothing about diet and just, yeah, really just left me high and dry. 
thankfully, in my process of waking up to all that food stuff, I had found a holistic practitioner, a functional medicine doctor in our neighboring city at a health food store. And I thought, huh, I wonder if she can help me. And so I called up the office. She actually um, called me back. I told her what I was struggling with. And I said, do you think you can help me? I want to go on to have a vaginal birth. And plus this is like no way to live. She said, yeah, I really think that I can help you. So Uh, I, that's not covered by insurance. So I financially, you know, had to make a commitment to this, which is another uncomfortable thing, right? Like our insurance pays for mainstream medicine, but we can't always get answers or solutions. In fact, like, I feel like rarely can we ever get an actual resolution of our condition over there. So our option is either live with it or take a med to bandaid the problem and the med that bandaids the problem could likely lead to other side effects, which then require other medications, but that's okay because your insurance covers all this. Right. So it's just like, you either go down that path or you go down the path of, you know, you have to put on your big girl panties and it's going to be on you. The instruction of a naturopath like yourself or a functional medicine doctor or whatever holistic practitioner they're going to tell you what to do and it's up to you to do it in the day in and the day out of what they suggest and what healing measures and protocols are going to set you up so that your body is put in a place where it can heal. So essentially we're working on removing the interference that is keeping it from healing and living as healthy and, and, um, just, you know, functioning optimally. And so I saw her, she found, uh, autoimmunity levels like high ANA. And I mean, it was really surprising that I didn't have more health issues going on than what I did. Cause they were pretty high, pretty significant. Wow. And so basically long story short in four months, of completely changing my diet and getting really strict and refined, getting on some supplements that according to my blood work showed that I needed some, some support in some areas. I, well, let me just say this in one month, I stopped tearing, wow. which blew my freaking mind that what I put in my mouth literally correlated with down South, like who would have ever thought. And then in four months, we watched my blood work basically return to normal. She gave me the thumbs up to get pregnant. I did. And we had the most incredible V back home birth in my home. And I didn't even tear. And that my friends is the power of the body and how it can heal with the right resources and the right guidance. So huge. So huge. You know, I think the one thing is, is like going from lichen sclerosis guys, you know, I will describe what I've seen. I mean, it looks like dehydrated beef jerky skin, like for lack of a better term. And so to yeah, be able to not Yeah, that's probably tear- the, the, yeah, the more worse end of it. I mean, it, and I can't even imagine like what that is. Cause I was struggling with just, I don't think mine was as severe, but I mean, it was miserable. So I can't even imagine. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen some terrible cases, um, vaginal labia. I mean, it, it just, wow. Um, so what, I know a lot of folks are going to be like, okay, so what was, what was deficient? What, what did you have that was deficient and what dietary changes? Like, what was your whole overhaul? Did you go completely organic and start growing your own food? Like how, (laughs) how far did you go? What did you do? Yeah. So I felt like my, now looking back, the changes that I did make, which I will say in just a second, that my body was just so receptive to finding some relief. It was like looking for something to just grasp onto, to get an upper hand, because if I could give it just a chance to get that upper hand, it's like, it just gained momentum. And I mean, four months just seems like, wow, that's fast. 
Mm-hmm. And it really, it really seems fast. And for some people, their healing is, is rather fast. In fact, um, I played a role right now in my hut, my friend's husband who has cirrhosis and he's been on the meld score chart. He is now, he was like a 20. The chart is like a six to a 40 total side note, but I just have to throw this in because it's so exciting and it's happening right now. So you started a six and he was at a 20. Um, he is down to an eight and this is all through changing his diet and his lifestyle and the body is healing. So back to me, I was, I did as much organic as I could. Um, at the time I was like caregiving for my grandma. So I had to take her out to dinner. Um, there was reasons why I had to take her out to dinner, but, uh, so I wasn't always able to eat organic, but I would get what I could. Um, so no, I wasn't a hundred percent organic, but I was gluten-free and dairy free for those, for those months. Um, and then vitamin D magnesium, um, a really good multivitamin, just some pretty basic stuff. I think there was some other extra things that she threw in for gut health. Oh, I did do kind of like a, a candida protocol for a couple of weeks because she, um, she seemed to believe that there was some candida present. And for those that don't know, that is basically an overgrowth of yeast in the vaginal canal. And, uh, so we wanted to kind of starve some of that off. So obviously no sugar. So, yeah, but I mean, was it worth it? Oh my gosh. Heck yeah. And how unfortunate that all the other women before me and behind me that are still living with lichen sclerosis that, you know, they don't, they weren't, they're not able to, they, cause they don't know the possibility of being able to completely reverse it. That is why we're talking today. You better believe that all my tag words and all the SEO in this are going to be blowing that out there because it is, I mean, it's a tough, it's a tough autoimmune condition. And and I, like Mm -hmm. I've described, I've seen some pretty, pretty severe cases uh, and gosh, you know, like in Planus, you know, there, there are very various differentiation differentiations here on this and and it's, it is tough, but yes, I have seen very powerful things happen with very basic things, not complicated protocols, you know, yes, you do have to put the work in, but here we are. So tell us a little bit about your most recent experience. Now you've got some, some hepatitis C that you're working on treating naturally. (laughs) Give us the scoop. Give us the background. Oh man. Okay. So this one is really like just a phenomenon. Let me just say, because most people, for those that don't know, hepatitis C is like supposed to be a bloodborne condition. So you get it through oftentimes, um, shooting up drugs, which I've never done a drug in my life, blood transfusions, um, uh, what else? Like some say intercourse, but my husband and I, we've only been with each other. He doesn't have it. It's just totally what well, tattoos. I don't have a tattoo. So it is something that supposedly affects, um, up to 50 million people in our nation and it affects the liver. And so ultimately people can end up getting cirrhosis and or liver cancer. And that's how they may pass based on, um, hepatitis C. But so almost three years ago, I got this mysterious diagnosis and clearly you can see, see why I say mysterious. I was just getting routine blood work and that same holistic doctor that helped me with my uh, lichen sclerosis. She was like, Autumn, what is the matter with your liver? And I'm like, I don't know. What are you, what are you talking about? And she said, I can't believe you're not jaundiced right now. Like I've got to check you for different types of hepatitis. So she did. And it came back positive for hep C. And I said, there's no way, like you have to redo that. They, they mixed up the labs. Like there's no way I I don't even have that. So now since I've been on this journey, I have had three different gastroenterologists say that 
Uh, I likely picked it up from a uh, nail salon. But then I've also had, because I have my podcast and we've talked about German viral theory. I don't know if you've ever gone there, but I've had some practitioners say there is no proof. There is no um, proof for, for a hepatitis C virus. Now, obviously that's a whole nother rabbit hole, so we won't go there, but point is I am here. I do have liver inflammation. Now the last couple months, uh, it's actually been on the lower side and I've been doing all sorts of things to work on naturally combating this and, um, ultimately conquering it. I really do believe that I will get there and, um, you know, we'll line up the the podcast tour at that point because <laughs> I want to share with the world what is possible. Um, but in the process, yeah, I have chosen to put the medication on the back burner. It is not something, and really it's got a black box warning. It has a ton of risks and side effects and the very organ that is, is quote compromised right now is the organ that is going to have to, um, you know, process this medication. And so my liver has been, been good overall, and I don't see any point in, in going there right now. There might be a time and a place for that, but I have learned so much in this journey and it has been so such an, it sounds crazy to say it's been a gift, but it, I've started my podcast from it. Um, I've learned so much. I know my story is going to be meant to help bring some sort of new awareness or encourage or inspire someone. It can't just go to waste. So I am here to share and talk about it in that way. It, you know, it's it's not uncommon for me to also have seen folks with hepatitis C that we have no idea why it's showing up. And Mm. there's a test called an array 12, which is an immune marker test that shows like what chronic like autoimmune marker, not autoimmune, sorry, what antibodies we have chronically in the blood. And sometimes Mm. I will pick it up there without testing hepatitis C, even though let's put it this way, a lot of, uh, it's a mimic hepatitis C antibody. And so it's very interesting, this connection between that. Really? Yes. Huh. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have to check I, that out. Yeah. I'll connect you with the array 12 information. Cause it's, it's something that it's, it's just the mimic hep C peptide, peptide or something like that. I, I, I will get it guys for you correctly here. Um, but it is, it's interesting because I've had a couple of people come positive for that on higher levels. And we talk about hep C, we then of course go back and run their viral, um, loads and see if anything's going on. And we look at their, you know, platelets and all that. And like, interestingly enough, I would say that I have had a dozen or more people that were like, no idea, no idea where this shows up and, and why, where it's coming in. And then this is the point at which, of course, send them to my good friend who does Ibu and IV therapy and things of that nature. So I would love for you to talk about those therapies that that you've tried and and the different things that you're doing for the liver at this point. So folks can kind of hear a little bit about things because, you know, in my practice, it's not my specialty. So I hand off to to a doc that is a pal of mine to to take care of these things. So, yeah, let's talk about it a little bit. Hey, health junkies, if your feet aren't happy and healthy, the rest of you could suffer from low back pain all the way up to neck pain. And yes, even gut issues can be related to your feet because your feet are connected to your nervous system. Happy feet equal one less thing the nervous system has to worry about. I want to tell you about Paluva. This is a new zero drop minimalist shoe with the distinctive five toe design. Paluvas give you the most authentic barefoot style experience, but with sufficient cushioning to use in everyday movement, fitness, and athletic activities. Paluvas are super stylish, so you also get a barefoot shoe that looks good too. Paluvas are a step ahead of every other zero drop wide box shoe because they feature separate slots for each of your five toes. 
So if you've been using toe separators, you can ditch them and just wear the paluvas. Those individual slots for each toe allow for correct dynamic movement of the foot through the walking or running stride, which is important when toes are encased in a single box, even a wide box. Now, minimalist shoes have faced controversy in recent years about causing injuries from inappropriate use. So you want to get walking in paluvas, living in paluvas, and doing whatever you can while you're going barefoot in your home and safe areas as much as possible. So go ahead and use your specialized running shoes, basketball shoes, work boots, high heels when you need to, but wear paluvas as much as possible to reawaken the natural functionality of the human foot to stand, walk, run, and perform. Try a pair of Paluvas with no risk and you'll quickly realize that these are the most comfortable shoes you've ever worn. They're designed to feel like you're walking barefoot on clouds. So visit Paluva, P-E-L-U-V-A dot com and take 15% off with the code HEALTHFIX. Let's get back to the podcast. Yeah. So there is a lot of interesting, incredible therapies out there. And I'm kind of in a place where, you know, I just to make this um, said and known because my situation is a bit more unique. So if you have, you're listening and you're someone that's struggling with something that is more common or that has like a name that's commonly dealt with in the holistic realm, Um, they're likely going to have a more uh, assured response of you need this or you need that. In my case, it pretty much all the practitioners that I'm working with, they've never like encountered someone that's wanting to take on hepatitis C naturally and they're for me, but they don't necessarily know what's going to do it or what's going to help. So we've, I've been working with these different practitioners to try and find, you know, what is going to put a dent in this. And so in the process of whether it has or hasn't put a dent in my, in my current situation, which all of these has done a little something, um, I would say, but for particular circumstances for maybe some of you listening, I mean, they can really send it home for certain conditions. These can be like a total game changer. So Um, let me just like rattle off some, and if any, you know, um, stick out, I guess we could go more into it. So I've had a vitamin, I I vitamin C IVs, Mm -hmm. uh, hydrogen peroxide IVs, which I didn't even know you could put hydrogen (laughs) peroxide in the blood, but you can, it's an anti um, viral, obviously, you know, an antibacterial. Um, I've also had something called UVBI, um, which essentially is uh, UV light therapy, where they send your blood through UV light and it's supposed to destroy any pathogens or parasites or viruses and things. Then it goes into a bag, they ozonate it or oxygenate it, and then they send it back through the UV light and back into you. I've also had, um, uh, some treatments with like biomats, um, lasers, um, uh, liver cleanses, obviously like with supplemental form I've had, uh, the rife machine, which is a electrical, uh, frequency that you hang on to. And cause it said that there's a frequency, <clears throat> excuse me. It says that there's a frequency out there that can destroy any pathogen, like you just have to find the right frequency, just like the right frequency can shatter glass. Well, you can find the right frequency that will essentially destroy hepatitis C. So that's the Rife machine. Um, I've had like this, uh, Vegas nerve treatment, Bowen therapy. Oh my gosh. Bowen therapy is absolutely incredible. Have you ever heard of it? I have heard of it. I've never experienced it myself though. Tell, tell folks about it. Oh my gosh. So definitely look up a Bowen therapist near you. There's not very many of them. So hopefully through our podcast and getting the word out, we can help people um, get more in this, but it's an Australian modality. And basically it works with the fascia. So it is like, a small manipulation on the top of the skin. 
and they do it in very particular places on the body. And the manipulation that they do sends a signal because the fascia sends signals to the brain and, and it, you know, that's how our body like kind of talks to each other and the different parts and the organs, et cetera. And so it can send signals to certain parts that, um, essentially ignite like healing functions, maybe in a joint or an organ or relaxing certain muscles. I mean, I sent a friend that was having, um, sciatica and Mm -hmm. within her first treatment, it was gone. And it's almost laughable because they don't look like they're even doing anything. It's, it's, I guess, kind of similar. The closest thing I could say is like maybe some semi-similar to acupuncture, but it's different points. Some of the acupuncture points correlate and others are just all, uh, just in the Bowen world of, of its own uniqueness. So anyway, that was, that was incredible. That greatly changed my blood work. It was rather mind blowing. Whoa. I, how did, how did it change it? I'm sorry. I got to know. <laughs> um, yeah, good question. So, okay. This is what I was told. I was told if you're going to do Bowen, you do three times and see like what it does for you. You have to do at least three times because that's like this kind of, for lack of a better term, like magical window to really see what it can do. So I did it. And on the third time I had just, it worked out perfectly. I had just gotten blood work like two weeks prior. And then I was getting it again for some reason. And I got it like two days after. And I'm not even joking. My liver enzymes were completely normal. And my viral load was like so close to being normal. I couldn't even believe it. And the unfortunate thing, oh my gosh, is I, I was like so excited. Well, then I went away and visited a friend and we ended up talking about parasite cleanses and I came home and I got on a parasite cleanse and it shot everything back up again, everything. And so, and then after that, like I did some more Bowen and it's incredibly relaxing to the nervous system. It really calms the nervous system. So, but it hasn't quite had that same effect again as what it did on the third treatment. Now, I know people with like, I know of people with like Parkinson's, um, that like one guy sees a friend of mine that does Bowen, um, and he comes to her, you know, multiple times a month because it actually helps him be able to walk and function and and move his body. So for my case in my viral condition, I don't know what that was, but I know that for so many other people, it's an incredible modality. And, um, so that's Bowen therapy. I also ventured into, um, trying ivermectin. Mm -hmm. And then I also have done some microcurrent therapies, which is microcurrent frequencies directly on my liver. Mm -hmm. And then something called Therify, which is like using a Tesla coil and -hmm. it has these noble gases at the head Ulana table. And it's at the, um, right next to your head and then right next to your feet. And essentially it sends this like electrifying ionizing frequency through your body where it raises the levels of the, the lower, sicker, more stagnant points of the body. And that was doing that in the microcurrent. Cause that was at the same facility that was doing amazing things for quite a while too, for me. Um, so yeah. And then I'm currently doing some light wave patches and then I just got done with a 21 day liver regeneration, um, beet juicing protocol. So I'm doing all the things over here. I will be back at some point, Janine, to (laughs) tell you that I have, I have arrived, but, uh, but right now we're still on the journey. Hey, you know what though? I mean, you've tried a lot of things and, and definitely, you know, let's put it this way. You're not alone in trying all the things. And I think that's a a good thing for folks to hear that like, 
yes, unfortunately, we do have to test out some things and try things just to know what's going to work best for us. And oddly enough, I um, I have seen the the Bowen work like that, too helping folks reduce antibodies, reverse, you know, reduce liver um, enzymes. I, I mean, crazy stuff helps, yeah. you know, like boost adrenal, like, so, like if we're looking at cortisol or even like sodium potassium chloride, like the electrolytes, I've seen that change and, and, and even blood sugar markers change. And so there's something with the fascia. I'm, I'm very convinced that fascia has a lot to do with trapping things. And so, um, one of the things I'll just say, just to throw in as a as a thought process, because I have a lot of theories about gallbladder disease and liver disease mm. and the fascia getting trapped in that mm. area. And I have seen over and over again, folks, they're, you know, maybe they notice that they've got a little bit of gallbladder stuff or things happen like that. And then um, they'll take either a cleanse protocol, like a parasite, or they'll do like yeah. a liver cleanse and their liver enzymes shoot through the roof. And then they're mad at me. Because they're like, what did you do to damage my liver? I'm like, mm -mm, hold on, hold on, stop what you're doing. Let's let's do a little bit of fascial work. Let's do a little self fascial work. It goes right down. So you know, you could say yes, they stopped all the things and it it, it did better, but their their enzymes were higher before, you know, elevated, and then they went higher, and then they went down below. So just so you guys who are listening, going, yeah. well, anything could stop it. Well, it, it was a little bit better than the level that we first started. So anyway, I love fascial stuff. Bowen, yes. I've never experienced it myself, but I've done other kinds of things. So Oh, you should. It's amazing. It's so relaxing. Oh, big plug for that. And then you had mentioned, you know, the there's a product called like the AMP coil, which is very similar to what you were describing in terms of the electrical frequencies. I believe that there is something to these frequencies. And I and like you had said that each each bug has its own frequency and there's a frequency at which we can knock these things out. And and mm -hmm. I do, I'm you know, the more I've been in the game, the more I'm like, there's something to that too. But I do sound like a quack because I'm like, well, you could try this or you could try it. Yeah, because here we are in a realm that we're trying to figure these things out, folks. It's yeah. not, you know, we don't have a set pattern. And which brings me to where I know that you feel like I do in terms of the power of bringing the, the health back to yourself, but also really looking at a holistic women's health type of, of approach versus having to go down the modern medicine route that, you know, if it's not serving you, like, obviously I'm not going to say that, you know, being able to have a C-section in an emergency situation is, is, you know, don't do it as terrible. No, there are benefits for modern medicine advances, mm -hmm. but there are times when the holistic part of things might be the better option. So you have a history of, of being a doula mm -hmm. and you have some, some interesting experiences you were talking about with the whole birth process as well. So give us a little background on what you've seen be amazing with the holistic side of birth and training for birth and preparing for birth and the process? Yeah. So what, what I've really seen and now have come to learn is there was a reason why God set it up for us to birth naturally and not have as many C-sections as what are being performed today. And fortunately, you know, the worst of it is because the doctor is going on a vacation and it's just easier to get the mom in. And that is just horrific in my mind. And it might take a while for, you know, women's minds to come over to see that side of things. But now that I've lived in it and I've been a birth doula for hmm, 12 years, um, I've seen how the conventional world works and, it's not, um, I think there's some sort of knowledge there that it's, it's not always in the best interest of the mom and baby, as far as letting things just flow naturally. Um, but yeah, so basically let me just break it down. So I've, I mostly perform in the hospital setting, supporting women through, what uh, they usually want, which is a natural childbirth or as natural as we can get, because that can be challenging in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I have um, done also many home births with midwives. And so, you know, 
I had the perception long ago that, oh, a home birth is like incredibly risky and scary. I mean, you're risking your life, you're risking your baby's life. And I came to find out that's actually not true for a healthy pregnant woman with no pregnancy complications. It's actually just as safe, very close in numbers as the hospital, um, as birthing in the hospital. And so, um, like for example, my midwife that I birthed with, I called her like the queen bee of Southern California. My daughter was her 880th home birth oh, wow. and she went on to have, I think close to like two, uh, 1500. I, I don't remember where she left off, but she went on well past mine before she retired. She never, ever had a baby or a mom die. So it's not, it, it's, it's a bit of a foggy facade that we, we peer into that world and we think that it's dangerous. So with that said, um, I've watched the natural processes of labor unfold and women can have, I won't say always, but can have more of a kind of an enriched experience because, and I will say, because it's less interrupted and there's less interventions with the natural hormones that are taking place, especially when baby's born, you have a surge of all these incredible bonding oxytocin, you know, hormones that come into the picture. And so, um, that is often there's, uh, there's interference, there's a uh, disruption in that process in the hospital, because oftentimes we've maybe got medication or just the labor hormones in general, the bright lights and the, you know, the demands and the, sometimes the fear that comes in, you know, it, it just not as respected, um, as what it is. And so it, yeah. So with that said, the health benefits of delivering naturally, I mean, from the baby getting its gut seated properly, when, when baby comes down the birth canal, their, their little gut is sterile and it's mom's amniotic fluid that gets to, seed and essentially start off that baby's immune system in Europe. They've recognized this, that they've swabbed the noses and the mouths of C-section babies. And all that they're finding is bad pathogens and, and the bad negative bacteria. There's no good guys. And so they're now taking the amniotic fluid and bathing baby in it to help the seeding process for the baby's gut. And it's no surprise. My, my son, he wound up with a yeast infection just a week, weeks after I delivered him. And thankfully I was just barely learning enough to know to start him on a little infant probiotic to support his gut. So tons of benefits there. Um, and physically for mom and the hormones and the postpartum phase, when you just leave things, you know, more untouched and just let nature take its course. It's, birth is not a procedure. Um, <laughs> it is a natural function of the body. And I think we get way too caught up in once again, we're just disempowered when it comes to our birthing processes, just like our health. And, um, we need to be reminded of that. And then on the flip side of, okay, you've had your baby, maybe you're, you're older now, you're getting those well women visits. Seeing a midwife is just the most beautiful, respectful uh, appointment that you can have for getting a pap smear or a breast exam. I really feel like there's so much extra wisdom and just beauty and tender and care and respect in that midwife for the woman that she is overseeing. I mean, a pap smear is just like a night and day experience between a gynecologist and a midwife. I mean, need I say more? It's just, it's so much better and, and more comfortable too. So. 
Yeah. No, I, I highly recommend um, seeing nurse midwives, nurse practitioners as well. You know, it's a different, it definitely is a, a different experience. I have a couple of, of really favorite nurse midwives that I know in, in, in town where I practice in. And really it's, it's one of those things that we need to think about a little bit, you know, but we're, we're here, we're here to empower others to stand up and step into, um, the awareness that, you know, if they don't like who they're seeing, go find somebody else. You know, you are not a victim. The victim mentality will defeat you. And if you believe that there's nothing you can do, you know, back to just health for a minute, like nothing you, or excuse me, if you believe there's nothing you did to contribute to your problems and there's nothing you can do to help, help yourself outside of take a drug or show up to a doctor's appointment, then you really are a victim, you know? And that's, that's the, the cycle that you're going to, you're going to live in, but you can choose to take control of your life and your health. And you can say, I'm not going to be a victim. And, you know, and part of that might be like what I had to look at and realize, I mean, going back to my hep C really fast, I mean, my body, okay. What was I, my body didn't have to assume or come down with the virus. Like just because I was exposed doesn't mean that I had to assume it and fully get it, but I did. So I had to look at, okay, like what was I not doing well in life? And looking back, I was working way too much. I was sitting all the time. I wasn't moving. I wasn't exercising. Um, I mean, I was eating clean, but my stress and my lifestyle was like, no wonder I'm like not even getting good oxygen and your body needs good oxygenation to fight off disease. So it's been an awakening process that, like I said, has been a blessing, <laughs> Um, but we have to be courageous enough to be able to look at and see what we could have done better and, you know, and then rise up out of that. We can become a victim or a victor. That's wise advice. It's wise advice. And it's absolutely a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. I, you know, if anyone is, you know, that's listening right now is like wondering, <sighs> you know, about, about their health, how to, how to move forward with it. We do have to take responsibility. We do. We have to take some responsibility for, for why things went in one direction or the other and not keep looking for all the external reasons, which brings me to the one thing that we haven't talked about yet is the concept of brain rewiring mm. as it's related to health. And how that plays into everything, since I noticed that you had mentioned you've been working on that too. This realm of the brain nervous system rewiring is really fascinating. And I wasn't so sure of it at first, I will say. <laughs> but once I understood it, I'm like, okay, this makes sense. And then hearing the stories of what this has done for people also people with uncurable conditions, even HIV in this, this realm of, of holistic approaches through this nervous system, brain rewiring, uh, people have overcome. And so my, my coach, she was down to just being able to eat. I think she said like seven or eight foods. She was sensitive to everything. She had major gut issues, um, major anxieties. And once she dealt with her nervous system, so she did all these costly protocols, all these holistic, you know, options and paths, which she will say, and she will guide the person into, we still need to eat healthy. Like you still need to do some of that. And you might still need some support in the supplement realm, but she now lives in this whole paradigm that, and it's true. If the nervous system is not calm, if you're not in rest and digest more than in the overdrive and the fight or flight, then your body simply never has any window of time to be able to heal. Now, 
the reason why you might tend to live in fight or flight more than rest and digest is because of possibly things that go even as far back to your childhood and how you respond to things in the world or how some of your, and it could be childhood. It could be something that happened last week. I mean, it could be any time in life, but it's for you to identify Was there something that took place that created a trauma, an upset, where it causes your body to get in this place of a fearful response? I mean, some people might even live in this just from COVID. They might be like Mm -hmm. set in this new nervous system response of just constantly worrying and fear and overthinking things that, you know, they, they might've, they, they might need to really sit with themselves and think, did I really, you know, go backwards <laughs> during that, um, and work on overcoming that. But anyway, she teaches, we, we work on going back to different things and scenarios or moments or whatever. And then she has these exercises that we do. That's like an oral exercise And with some like affirmations and you're really just catching yourself in the midst of your day. If you find yourself a little anxious or if you find yourself not calm, I'm just like maybe thinking a lot of things and I'm just realizing like, wow, I'm kind of like overstimulated right now. Let's calm down. I do these exercises. I say these uh, affirmations. And it's a slow and gradual process that you work with yourself to create new neuropathways in the brain that teach your body to stay calm more often and to not be so, uh, so hypervigilant in your response. And some of these things might even be sub- on a subconscious level, but at least the conscious ones you deal with first. And then she helps bring more and more out in the subconscious as well. That's a great explanation of re- brain rewiring and, and taking it full circle for us. It's good. It's good stuff. I, I'm in the process of learning it myself. And I think hmm. it's something that really, I work with a lot of clients on it now, even though I'm still learning it myself, I feel like it's just a matter of all of us needing to to learn how to find calm and peace in yeah. in the chaos that we have in in our world and our inner thoughts and all of that. And and just to leave the audience with with some exercises um that anyone can do. It really just boils down to stopping. Like whatever you're feeling in that moment of fear, anger, um, you know, anxiousness. And you go through your three senses, you, you look and you focus on something like maybe there's a bird in the tree. And then you think of like three sounds that you can hear and you just like look for those sounds and you can say them out loud. I hear the refrigerator humming. I hear a bird. I hear a car going by. And then like two things that you might smell and just that alone. And then the, the affirmations are, I am safe because when your body is in an over like hyper vigilant response. I think she calls it. Um, it thinks it's being chased by a bear. It, it doesn't know the difference. Like your body is responding in that way. And if you don't work on pulling back and stopping that response, it's like, it just gets driven in to become a more normalized response. And before you know it, you're living that all the time. And so, um, when you can calm, you can learn to have more control to calm yourself and be more mindful of when you're not at peace and then do things to intentionally get yourself to that more peaceful place. That's, that's the self-empowering part of this is you have so much you can do to kind of undo and reverse some of these autopilot tendencies that keep you from healing and can promote um, and propel you into the future where your body is in more of a rest and digest um, healing state. So huge. So huge that we can do this. I'm like, why wasn't this taught in preschool for us? Really? Like, what the heck? 
but here we are learning it now. Autumn, my goodness, we've talked about so many different things and gosh, so much cool stuff here. I would love for folks to know about your podcast a little bit better um, or a little bit more, know better, do better. A lot of better stuck in my head here. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so tell us about your podcast, what folks can expect from that. Tell us where we can find you online and all of that good stuff. Absolutely. Well, um, I know better, do better podcast. We cover all things, um, alternative holistic paths, um, to wellness. So, I mean, I cover anything from healthy brands. I love to have on like healthy food brands that do it right and actually care about our health to holistic practitioners, to holistic dentists. That's a whole nother mm -hmm. realm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got a dentist for you to have on that'll blow your mind. Like <laughs> so many breast cancers can actually be linked back to root canals. Are you familiar with that? Yep. Yeah. So that's a whole nother can of worms to open up, but so important that you see a dentist that is um, conservative and they're not like literally looking to drill and bill you for every little thing in your mouth. Um, and we even have an episode on straighten your teeth naturally, which is this incredible thing called myo brace and myo functional therapy. I'm sure you're familiar with that, but anyway, so we have a blast over there. Um, and then website is autumnmcleese.com and, uh, Instagram and TikTok is autumn.mcleese. And then I also have a consulting mentorship program where I essentially help guide people, that are struggling, whether they're wanting to, you know, do the basics of, okay, I want to start to like overhaul parts of my kitchen and my pantries. I want to do better with the foods that I'm buying. And I want to know about those clean brands or the clean laundry detergent or the clean dishwashing <laughs> uh, stuff. So I actually have a freebie for this. I can get you the link so you can pass along yeah. to the listeners, but there is a clean swap guide that I have that covers everything from ketchup to water filters to makeup and even a candle that fights mold in your home, which is incredible. <laughs> Very cool. And, uh, but yeah, and then back to the mentorship, um, consulting, I, you know, help anyone from that all the way to, you know, getting connected with a holistic doctor or a dentist and that kind of thing. So all in all, I'm about essentially bringing the awareness and really helping um, equip and empower women to know better so that they can do better for themselves and their family. So huge. We need it. We need more of us out there. So keep up the good work. Thank you so much for coming on, Autumn. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks so much for having me. It's been such a joy to share in these passions with you, with your incredible audience. So God bless y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.